The Co-Design Living Lab program was set up in 2017 and our membership base is over 2,000 people. We like to bring people in with lived experience to really start to think about what are the priorities in terms of improving mental health care and its services in Australia. It's very important to us that co-design remains committed to power sharing and shared decision making through our processes. It's also important that we're producing and making things that are clearly relevant to the lives of people with lived experience and indeed to professionals where those interventions or digital technologies might be being implemented. Thank you all for coming. In this session that you're about to watch, we joined together in June 2021 to co-design some changes for our Healthy Hearts study. The Healthy Hearts study is looking at people with severe mental illness and improving their cardiac health risk. And we had people come in um, before the trial started to talk about a conversation aid around how they would actually go about um, with a nurse looking at different areas that they want to improve on. So we've come up with some ideas around changing some of the format of how things might be delivered out in the general practice. And and we wanted to work together with a group of people around some of those suggestions today. I'm happy to do the face to face because it does, you said, with lived experience. And that's the key to, I think, with anything we're doing is the lived experience factor of it. And we can all be a part of that here. And it gives other people an idea and instead of the technical jargon they hear gives them an idea of what we actually go through. So one of the things that we like to do just before we get started, which helps us warm up, is just to go through our working together agreement. Our working together agreements build on some questions that we ask before people join our co-design sessions to ensure that everyone feels safe and comfortable working together. It is important to be assertive so you can have your say. Yeah, so speaking up. It's a bit different in a group to than a one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, for sure. So I'll pop that there. How we thought we might start is that we had a session on Friday and we put together a bit of an experience map around the new approach to the Healthy Heart Study. People felt like um, having questions written down ahead or knowing what is going to happen ahead would be really Or having critical. a um, advocate. An advocate, yes. yeah. Well, uh, so, you know I mean? so the advocate would help you... Bunch. Yes, yes. A matching type of GP, yeah. The Healthy Hearts Journey Map was created in a virtual co-design session the week before, and it highlighted different touch points and perspectives about what was important for people coming into their virtual care appointment around reducing cardiovascular risk. How do you all feel about the idea that You'd be given a link and you'd jump on to a virtual session with the nurse. I was wondering whether having known what the questions are going to be before that session comes up and maybe that might help to ease some of the anxiety. The online sessions have made things a little bit easier for people to be involved in our co-design activities. It enables people to participate from the safety of their own home and it has a wider reach. So we've been able to have people participate from regional Victoria, from interstate. So I just want to let you know how much work we've already done. Good. That's a lot. Look at it all. Woo. What if you had someone going with you? You could. Yeah, so if you had the same person going with you from A to B, but they were there the whole way from the, and then you wouldn't need them the second, third time around. Out of this whole process, we've got some of these things on the table here around some things that we would add in, what we call some design ideas, and that's what we're going to turn to now. While some co-design results in more ideas that need to be explored in future sessions, a really important part of co-design in general is about identifying the design principles for an intervention, a product or a tool. There's three different scenarios and we're going to work in pairs. Can't and we just email if something happens oh, we could. through the um, or you put it, Or you put it into the app. Yeah. And you put that into the app, the app goes straight to the doctor. Yeah, and as I say, I'm just at a mental block at the moment myself, so that's given me some ideas. Would the nurse need to be present with the GP or not? No, the GP would provide the results. So you see the GP and then the information's passed on to the nurse. Yes. Talking together is really important and enables everyone to share ideas and come up with decisions and new directions for the research. One of the first things we thought of was we need to develop an app. Yep. And the young lady Debbie here decided that 
it should be an app for a watch, which I think is great. We want her to have the option of having a phone call, a Zoom, yep. or a face-to-face. -face. Okay. She should have the option. So I thought to involve a support worker, family and friends would be an extra boost to the confidence in progress of achieving the goals. Like in my situation, I would definitely want them involved in helping me. Mine is about following through with certain actions on a daily basis. But I think, like they said, that, that could be on an app as well. Ask for a letter from the nurse as the first point of contact. Then we contact the GP. Uh, that's an important step in the process. That sounds fantastic. So a lot of stuff about reminders and support. So thank you. And I think that will close the session today. Thank you. So these changes are now implemented in the Healthy Hearts trial, which is recruiting nationally and working with GPs to improve heart health for people living with severe mental illness in Australia.